Rush is a game mode in Battlefield 1 that I don't have much time for. Unfortunately, I think it's fallen victim to a few changes, and it's overshadowed by a far more impressive linear game mode, namely Operations. The rise of the Frontlines game mode as well hasn't helped Rush much, and I can't help but feel a little bit sorry for the game mode, which was once one of my highlights of my Battlefield gaming time. The reduction overall to a lower 12 players per team count across all platforms is one I think was made to stop the mode being confused with Operations, which admittedly does take on a very similar form, but it also reduced the action level somewhat. On maps that allow vehicles, for example, there are times where half a team could be sitting in a heavy tank or a land ship, and that severely reduces the foot traffic around objectives, which I feel reduced the frantic gameplay somewhat, and that's what I liked about Rush. It was kind of an edgy game mode. I finally appear to have found some maps, however, that I do think suit the game mode in Battlefield 1, Zaritsen and Volga River. If you watched my video yesterday on Battlefield 1's first birthday, you'll have seen me playing with the BAR on Rush on these two maps, and that was without a doubt some of my most fun times I've had in Battlefield 1 for a good while. Playing the same maps on the same modes all of the time can get a little bit tiresome, so I threw caution to the wind and just decided to join a DLC Rush server, and to my surprise, I ended up having a really good time. I played Attack and Defend on both Zaritsen and Volga River, and I found the experience to be very, very nice. Gameplay flowed quite smoothly, and it got stuck in certain places, but where I'd expect it to get stuck. There were certain challenges in the map that needed to be overcome, but none of those points would be particularly frustrating, which I think is a good sign that the mode suits the map that it's being played on. Volga River especially was extremely fun. Now I've had my reservations before about this map's inherently open design, in certain parts of it anyway, and the reduced player count here removed some of those pressure points. During the Red Tide operation, the Red Army can get stuck in the first sector and struggle to even get past it by the time the operation finishes, and that's due to an extreme lack of cover heading up to the destroyed houses and an almost unbroken line of sight for the White Guard looking right back at them. Here on Rush, the number of players being lower, using those snowy trenches on their way up to those destroyed buildings, meant it wasn't a duck shoot for the White Guard because there was less movement to be seen, and it meant that flanking could actually occur and end up being an effective attack for the Red Army. The presence of vehicles on the map as well, it wasn't a futile attempt for the Red Army. They actually managed to push forward with them over the open ground and made them work. During rounds of operations, the open ground almost resigns the lifespan of those Mark V landship tanks to just seconds, rather than maybe a couple of minutes like you'd expect a normal tank life to go. In Rush, there is no such problem. For sure, they're still a big target, but because there are less players overall, their impact is more profound. They become more dangerous as a result. Their turrets and machine guns can overpower infantry much more easily, and the retaliation from infantry is less frequent. The density of assault soldiers and their explosives is much less in Rush, and there's more kit variety across the board. The other map, Zaritsen, is an infantry-only Rush map, and again, the map excels because of this and the lower number of players overall. The first section is filled with broken houses and that makes for excellent cover for advancing infantry. Now lines of sight can be created by taking down all of the walls if you're a defender, and that was the case when I played. The defending team kept activating artillery and using rocket guns to blow up all of those destructible walls, and that opened up more of an area for them to shoot through. And it was an effective tactic, but if the attackers can make a big push right at the start of the round, the first sector can be completed very easily. I also like the finishing section of this map, the objectives moving right down to the Riverside train yard. That's a setting that you don't really get to see in some of the other game modes. These two maps have single-handedly proven to me that Rush can be fun in Battlefield 1, but I'd argue overall, looking at all of the maps available in the game, it's still a disappointing game mode. I think it just lacks the punch of some of the other game modes. Operations is very grand, Conquest is what Battlefield is, and Frontlines has kind of stolen Rush's limelight a little bit. 
I think there is something that could be done to improve the rush game mode, however. I have mentioned at the start that Operations and Rush kind of feel very similar, but Operations 40 player servers have recently been removed from Battlefield 1. Well, how about Rush being bumped upwards to 32 players instead of just 24, having 16 versus 16 instead of 12 versus 12? Could that help boost Rush up the pecking order just a little bit? Rush is a game mode that's supported on every single map in the game, as far as I'm aware, both the base game maps and the DLC map pools, so the change would be accessible to every single player of the game. On some maps, as I mentioned, like Volga River and Zaritsen, and various other maps I assume, can still be very good with a low player count, and I will maintain that point here, but some of the maps suffer from that low player count. Larger maps like Sinai Desert, they just lack foot traffic in general around objectives because players can pile into tanks and there's extremely open lines of sight. Would bumping the game mode from 24 to 32 players be an improvement or would it be an even further step backwards? I'd like to think that 32 man rush would play out very similarly to 40 man operations, just with lower reinforcement numbers and a single chance at attacking overall. Now I voiced this topic on Twitter this afternoon and it seems plenty of my own followers over there and my own community feel this is a change that would reflect positively for Battlefield 1. And Danny on PC has then posted the topic onto the CTE Reddit page, I've linked that down in the description for you. It would be nice to see DICE perhaps offer up the chance for the community to test 32 man rush on some maps on the CTE before they make any changes, if any at all, to the main game. Perhaps testing some of the maps will reveal a good change or a bad change, but then at least we've given it a chance overall. I feel that 32 players has always been the sweet spot for Rush in the Battlefield franchise. That was the number of players available to play Rush in Bad Company 2, at least on the PC anyway. I believe Xbox 360 and PS3, I think they were locked to 12v12. It led to some awesome matches on maps like Isla Innocentes, Valparaiso and Laguna Pressa, which to this day really are still some of the best rush maps and they haven't really been beaten by any other Battlefield games. It would be really awesome if we could test 32 players in the Battlefield 1 CTE. Just a couple of things that I want to mention at the end of this video today, just a couple of Battlefield 1 PSAs. It seems battle packs and scraps, they're not working properly in game at the moment. You can't access them and I don't think you can use your scraps either. DICE is aware of the issue and they are working on a fix. I'm unsure if we'll be retroactively given the battle packs that we've earned whilst this issue has been going on. There is sort of a trick to get around the system. You need to scrap one of your current skins that you have in your inventory and you'll be awarded the battle packs that are currently sitting in the background somewhere that you can't get access to. But if you don't want to scrap a skin that you've already got, then you may as well just wait for the fix. Keep your eyes on the Battlefield Twitter account and they will post some information on that very soon. And I also wanted to mention that there is a CTE test coming up on Tuesday the 24th of October. That's the same day this video has been uploaded. It will be the final version of the next main game patch, I believe, testing for stability. So if you want to help DICE approve the patch nice and quickly so that it can make it out to the main game, make sure you get yourself involved. PC and console will be updated at the same time and you'll be able to preload the patch from 10am Central European time on Tuesday the 24th of October. Maybe you can set it off to download whilst you're at work or something. And just one final note, CTE from here on out will be sort of having timed sessions instead of being open all the time. So DICE will put servers up, everyone can join, get in there at that time and play in some proper populated servers. And then after a few hours, DICE will take the servers down and CTE will go silent again. They're doing this so they can get more relevant data in a timely manner and it means that people can plan their evenings around testing on the CTE if that's something that they want to do. But there we are. Rush can be fun in Battlefield 1 as long as you're playing on the right map, but I think it could be even better with a slight bump in player numbers. I'm sure there are plenty of you guys out there that want to have your say, so if you do, please go ahead and leave me some comments down below in the comments section and I'll be down there reading as many as I can. But until next time, 
My name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.